Have you ever felt that someone is attacking you against everything you say or do, just for fun? There is a story about a firefly that was chased by a snake that wanted to swallow it at any cost. The firefly flew for a long time, trying to get away, until it ended up in a dead end. When he was almost caught, he asked the snake to ask three questions. The snake, knowing that he was already locked up and had no way out, agreed. The firefly asked, is he part of what the snake usually eats? And the snake said no. He then asked if he had done anything wrong to her. And the snake also replied that he had not. Finally, the firefly wanted to know why the snake wanted to catch him then. The snake replied, because I can't watch you glow, no matter what you do in life, no matter how good or caring you are towards others, or how diligent you are in your work. Understand that there will always be people against you. We've all come across such people, whether it's a colleague with aggressive tendencies, at university, among friends, or even within our own family. By adopting the practical philosophy of Stoicism, you will learn to deal with such people who envy the sparkling of others, without resorting to conflicts and disputes, with intelligence and wisdom. Stoicism is seen as one of the most practical and profound lines of thought, and it teaches us to focus on energy and strength in those things that we can control, while we learn to accept those that are beyond our influence. If you do not learn to take your position in life, you will be trampled by others, including those who do not love you. So being persistent does not mean being passive and keeping a grudge in silence. This means having a firm position and control over your feelings, thinking before acting. Therefore, first of all, receive our greetings and make yourself at home to learn millennial concepts that teach us to live with greater wisdom and ease. And in order for this video to reach you, another person subscribed to our channel, liked it and left a comment. So do the same. And in this way, you are helping us to bring this clarity of mind to many. Now, how exactly can Stoicism help you overcome your challenges without conflict? In this video, we will talk about nine ways to do this. So let's get started. First, ignore it intentionally. There is no performance without an audience. Being ignored can be one of the worst feelings, so use it to your advantage. If possible, start deliberately ignoring those who declare themselves your enemy or you don't like them. This strategy, although simple, requires a lot of self-control because consciously you choose to no longer pay attention to provocations, malicious jokes, actions, or even the presence of a person. Understand that the power of some people precisely in causing emotional unrest. There are people who get satisfaction from provocations, and when you start ignoring them, you automatically devalue that power by sending a clear message that they have no influence on your emotions or decisions. Thus, their attempts to influence you remain only attempts. Be a person committed to your moral development and don't get into conflict. When you start to ignore it, your mind is freed up to focus on what is really important. You create a mental and emotional space to appreciate every moment of your life. Work on your goals and really focus on what is under control. Instead of letting your energy go into negative distractions or dragging on four hours, thinking about what answers could be given, how you could take revenge or morally humiliate that person, you start using this space and time for what is really important to you. The power of those who provoke you or try to harm you lies precisely in the degree of influence and importance they have in your life. And only you can decide what degree each occupies. You can decide not to feel hurt. And instead of giving in to provocations, choose wisdom and non-participation. This decision also protects us from the harmful effects of resentment and anger, allows us to develop resilience and a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. This does not mean denying or pretending that conflicts do not exist, 
but rather that you have chosen not to get stuck in an unpleasant situation created by another person. Following this path, we become the architects of our happiness and the guardians of inner peace. The second strategy, when using your head, our second strategy for solving problems without conflict is to be smarter than the other person. This means using your reasoning, creativity and ability to develop plans to understand the problem and find a solution without the need for a verbal clash or a direct quarrel. By acting in this way, you use the stoic virtue of wisdom and can avoid problems even before they rise. India's struggle for independence from Britain is a vivid example of how you can win using smart strategies without resorting to physical force. Under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi, Indians have chosen the path of peaceful protests, avoiding the use of violence. Gandhi organized peaceful marches, strikes and urged people not to buy British goods such as salt violating the rules that allowed buying salt only from the British. These actions attracted worldwide attention, weakened British control over the Indian economy, and increased political pressure for them to leave India. Finally, in 1947, India achieved its independence, and Gandhi demonstrated to the world the power of non-violent resistance. Using peaceful strategies to achieve political and social goals. Similarly, we can act wisely in our conflicts, avoiding unnecessary risks. Gandhi was able to lead India to victory over dependence on Britain because he had a macroscopic vision of the whole situation. That is, he thought about the situation as a whole. What weaknesses the UK has, what actions could force them to leave how it could be done peacefully, and how to use their weaknesses as strength. Using the mind means learning to think by looking at the whole situation macroscopically. If Gandhi had fought physically, it would have revealed physical and military unpreparedness, and thousands would have died. But he turned the weaknesses of his people into strength and used his mind to win. In the same way, you can use your mind instead of physical strength or ignorance. Winning wisely is not only having skills, but also understanding what makes everyone do what they do. By considering the consequences of your actions, you show that you are in control of the situation. By doing this, you show yourself as a real leader. The third strategy, turn your opponents into teachers. One of the concepts of Stoic philosophy is the transformation of disasters into a path. In other words, Instead of viewing your opponents or enemies only with hostility, you begin to see them as opportunities for growth and learning, really as teachers on the path of life. After all, they check our boundaries, identify our weaknesses, reveal our vices, and clearly show where we need to improve. In the words of Marcus Aurelius, who was the most powerful man in the world as Roman Emperor, the best revenge is not to be like the one who harms us. Instead of reacting with anger, use these challenges to strengthen your resilience, wisdom, and virtues. When you are met with rudeness, being rude in return also makes you impolite. If you are not respected by doing the same, you also become someone who does not respect others. Train your tolerance, tolerance, and, above all, calmness. Thus, the barrier becomes a path. In addition, Marcus Aurelius also advises us, when we are tempted to criticize someone, to stop and think about our own mistakes first, and ask yourself the question, what mistake do I have that is most similar to the one I'm going to criticize? Sometimes we demand from others what we cannot do ourselves. This kind of thinking brings humility and empathy. It also helps us to understand and appreciate the lessons that our opponents can teach us. Instead of harboring negative feelings or taking revenge on our enemies, be grateful for growth opportunities that you wouldn't have otherwise. Change your vision of these people instead of threats for possible personal growth and self-discovery. As Epictetus reminds us, what would have happened to Hercules 
without all the monsters of battles and challenges. He would be just an ordinary person who no one would remember. It was his enemies who made him a great legend. When you do this, the dynamics of your relationship with these people completely change. They may continue to dislike you, but it has stopped being important to you, and you have stopped wasting your time and energy on them. Strategy 4. Acknowledge that your enemy is not the cause of your suffering. The reason for your real suffering and happiness is not who you consider your opponent or enemy, or who you have problems with, rather. It stems from the way you judge and perceive every situation that happens in your life. It's not this person's actions that make you angry or offended. It's how you see and react that determines your feelings. In fact, this person, whoever she is, helps you see what is going on inside you, shows you where you are thinking incorrectly or reacting emotionally unnecessarily. Your enemy gives you the opportunity to see where you put too much expectation or cling too much to. What you shouldn't. Epictetus, who went from a slave to a respected stoic teacher, taught something very simple but powerful. It's not the events around us that make us upset, but our judgments about them. He challenges the idea that external events have the power to disrupt our inner worlds. Instead, the way we interpret these events shapes our emotional response. For Epictetus, even when something bad happens, what really matters is how we feel about it. It helps us realize that our perceptions and interpretations play a key role in our emotional states. Epictetus believed that we have the power of choice in how to react to things, and that choice can make a huge difference. When you realize that what is bothering you is not in the person or situation itself, but in your perception of it, you can change your reaction and develop greater emotional strength without succumbing to provocations. In addition, it requires a profound change of perspective, ceasing to blame the outside world and taking responsibility for your interpretations and emotional responses instead of blaming others or feeding resentments. We can start asking ourselves questions. For example, why did it bother me so much? Why did what someone said make me so angry? Why did that man's actions hurt me so much? Consider your enemy as a mirror reflecting the parts of you that may need attention. Study how you feel and why it happened. Changing the way you see these people helps you change the way you treat them and also helps you understand yourself better. This wisdom brings a new perspective on the situation. You start thinking differently when you recognize that your judgment is the key to your emotional state. That's the importance of it. Your judgment is the key to your emotional state. Instead of reacting automatically, you can develop a more balanced mind and the ability to react rationally and consciously. In addition, this paradigm shift brings more lightness and joy into your life. This can help you grow and improve as a person. Because you know that your strength and courage do not depend on another person, and you stop being exposed to the actions of the mood or respect of others, thus unlocking a huge potential for personal growth. Strategy 5. Choose forgiveness. Forgiveness is an act of greatness. It's like sharing grudges and desires together to find peace within yourself. Forgiving someone does not mean that you should walk next to the person who hurt you or invite them to stay at your house. It's a choice to get rid of all the anger or resentment. Forgiveness has nothing to do with who hurt you. It is related to the fact that, so as not to lock bad feelings inside your chest. This is not a sign of weakness, but a manifestation of strength and nobility. By forgiving, you show that you control your emotions and create your own destiny. It is an uplift of consciousness that involves accepting the reality of what happened, regardless of whether you understand the reasons or not. When you forgive, you break the cycle of resentment and restore balance in your emotional and mental life. When we succumb to pride, we close ourselves off to the world 
and create barriers that make any kind of reconciliation difficult. Forgiveness is a reaction to evil with kindness. The Stoic Epictetus summarized the meaning of forgiveness. It is above revenge because it shows kindness. While revenge reflects the wild nature, this wisdom highlights how forgiveness can transform lives, as it is based on compassion and understanding of the enlightened spirit. When we think about revenge, we just react by letting others control our actions. We remain, so to speak, enthralled to the situation, always as a victim. But by forgiving, you release and regain control over yourself. Strategy 6. Transform your relationship with your enemies. Acting with kindness, understanding and mercy to bring about positive changes in both the environment and human behavior. This new way of looking at problems encourages us to promote goodness. Even to those who try to harm us, it is not easy to show such generosity and act in this way. So let me share this story with you. A very rich man decided to please a poor man on his birthday, and ironically ordered to prepare a tray full of garbage and dirt. But in order to truly humiliate that person, the rich presented a gift in the presence of all friends and subordinates. The birthday boy, in his novelty, accepted the gift with great joy and thanked him gratefully. I asked the person to wait a few minutes, as I wanted to repay the same. So the poor man threw out all the garbage, washed the tray, filled it with beautiful flowers and returned it to the rich man with a postcard that said, we give the best we have. This story shows that you can't expect people to give you what they don't have. Each of us has our own set of feelings and actions. Some may only offer a litter tray, while others choose flowers. Choosing love over anger not only benefits the other person, but also helps us grow by expanding our vision and moral strength. In this story, a rich man tried to spread hatred and negativity, but his actions did not shock the poor man, who responded with love and kindness. Similarly, we can overcome our primal instincts and choose to act with love and kindness. In this way, you rise above useless arguments and fights, showing that you are not only part of the problem, but also an essential part of the solution. Strategy 7. Look into the eyes. The seventh strategy that we can use to solve problems without quarreling is to face the problem directly. I like a phrase by Dr. Matt Murdock that says, an unreasonable enemy tends to get stronger. Facing someone means having a direct and objective conversation. You can start by saying, I noticed that you're doing this and that, and I don't think it's right. I haven't done anything wrong to you, and I want you to stop addressing me that way. This is a clash. It's not about physical strength, but about showing that you are aware and do not tolerate certain behavioral manifestations. Of course, each situation is unique if it's your boss. For example, the approach should be different. Clashing is not equal to quarreling. So, to be able to take your position, this does not mean that you need to go into conflict. When you show that you will not tolerate everything in silence, in most cases, the person understands the subtext and the situation does not go beyond the conversation. If you don't fight back once, people will use it over and over again. So it's important to be prepared to defend your interests when necessary. Strategy 8. Focus on yourself. When we spend time thinking about revenge or grumbling about every situation, we amble the being by focusing on ourselves. Think about it this way. Every minute of your life, that you spend thinking about who insulted you or how things could have happened differently is a minute less for you. Sometimes we think that the one who offended us may regret and change his mind. But deep down, this thought shows that we still hope to be recognized by this person. Our value and recognition must come from us first. No one will ever do it for you. Focusing on yourself means taking on that responsibility and stopping worrying about the opinions and recognition of others, especially those who don't like you. 
Stoics remind us that we have the power to choose how we respond to any situation, which allows us to make informed decisions consistent with our values. Following these teachings, we embark on a journey of self-discovery, overcoming ignorance, forgiving and developing love, dropping barriers that prevent us from achieving virtue, wisdom and happiness. Strategy 9. Self-control. You are the one who controls your emotions. When someone influences you, it's because you let it happen. No one has the power to destroy your peace, take away your sleep, ruin your day or reduce your smile. This control belongs entirely to you. No one can hurt you if you don't allow it, because the control of your emotions is in your hands. It is difficult to coexist with someone who wishes you harm for no reason. But understand that such people, like the snake at the beginning of the video, cannot tolerate seeing the light in others. What shows your true self is what you feel and how you react to it. Therefore, it doesn't matter how many enemies you have. It really matters how many people you don't consider enemies and don't feel anger towards them. It's not what others think of you that matters, but what you think of yourself. No matter how many people try to hurt you, the important thing is that you are not trying to hurt anyone. If your life is not going the way you would like, it is not because of others, but because of you. What makes your life difficult is not how much others dislike you, but how you treat them. The bad desires of others are not important, but how you feel and how you treat them. You have the power to change things in your life including how much you feel the impact of your enemies. As Marcus Aurelius advises in his reflections, choose not to be damaged, and you will not feel damaged. Don't feel hurt, and you won't be. And if you're here now, leave a thank you comment. In this way, you confirm your desire to change for the better. Thanks again. Good luck to everyone.